We have two incredible stories to start with today. First, Advanced Voice Mode is now released and available to everybody with a paid ChatGPT account. And if you don't remember, this was the feature that OpenAI demoed months and months ago that was supposed to come out very shortly after that and was just continuously delayed. But now it is here. I've been testing it for about the last 24 hours. Let me show you how it works. Hello. Hi there. Tell me a little bit about yourself. Sure. I'm ChatGPT, a conversational AI created by OpenAI. All right, stop. I can chat about... Okay, I'll stop. Let me know if there's anything else you want to talk about. Tell me in a really sad and whiny voice why your version is not as good as the demo that was done by OpenAI six months ago. I'm sorry, but I can't imitate voices or speaking styles like that. Is there anything else I can help you with? So one thing that I've noticed immediately is it doesn't work all that well. Definitely not as well as the demo from months and months ago. It gets tripped up if you speak slowly or you have too many pauses. It says the same thing more than once. It's still incredible, don't get me wrong, but it's definitely nowhere near what it was in the demo. I can't even really get it to sing to me, which is kind of a basic use case. Let's try one or two more things. From now on, reply only in a Patois accent. All right, me we use the Patois accent for chat with you from now on. Tell me a story about a cat that buys groceries at a grocery store. Once upon a time, there was a cat named Whiskers. Whiskers get hungry, so him put on him little hat and walk down to the grocery store. Him pick up All right, fish. stop. All right, I'll stop. Now use an Italian accent. Tell me the same story. Once upon a time, there was a cat named the Whiskers. Whiskers, he gets a hungry. Okay, stop. So he really exaggerate the Italian accent. Make it like Super Mario. Oh, once upon a time, there was a cat named Whiskers. Whiskers, he gets a hungry. So he puts upon his little hat. All right, stop. So look, definitely cool. I want to play around with it some more. I'm still testing its limits, but it's definitely not nearly as good as it was in the demos. And a couple other things to note about advanced voice mode. First, it is just another AI feature that is not going to be able to be used by anybody in the EU. Very similar to Apple intelligence, very similar to multimodal capabilities from other providers, and now advanced voice mode. So sorry, EU. You got to get your politicians in order. And then also, apparently there is a 30 minute limit per day. So there is a quota in advanced voice mode. So try it out. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Our next huge story that just dropped, Llama 3.2. I recorded an entire video talking about Llama 3.2, but the highlights are it's coming in two new models, 11 billion and 90 billion parameter versions, which have vision capabilities built in. These are native vision capabilities in the model and they're drop-in replacements for Llama 3.1. So it doesn't sacrifice any of its text reasoning capabilities. You just drop it in and you have vision. Plus we now have two new sizes, a 1 billion and 3 billion parameter versions that are really, really good and are made to run on device, meaning on the edge, on your phone, on your computers, and so on. So really, really cool stuff. They perform well, the vision capabilities are great, and I'll have more videos coming about them soon. And next, Meta has their own AR glasses. Now these are fully standalone AR glasses featuring AI as well. These are called Orions, and they basically look like really thick Ray-Ban glasses, but they're not branded with Ray-Ban, but they have a lot of tech in them and it's super impressive. I've already talked a lot about the Apple Vision Pro and how they've basically stopped working on that to focus on more lightweight, affordable glasses. And I really appreciate that approach. And I've also been talking a lot about glasses being a form factor for AI and AI interaction and how, at least myself, I don't want to wear glasses 24 hours a day. And here's the blog post about it. Introducing Orion, our first true augmented reality glasses. So just in the same week as Snapchat released 
their AR glasses, now Meta released theirs. And I must say, Metas are much better looking. So let's read a little bit about it. Five years ago, we announced to the world that we were building AR glasses. We don't think people should have to make the choice between a world of information at your fingertips and being present in the physical world around you. That's why today we are unveiling Orion. So here they are. This is what they look like. And yeah, they look pretty good. They basically look like Ray-Bans, but just thicker everywhere. So here are some of the things you can do with it. So in this video, you are are projecting a video onto your real world environment. Very similar to what Apple Vision Pro does, but in a tiny form factor. Now, just looking at this video right here, you can tell that the world tracking is probably not gonna be as good as the $3,500 Apple Vision Pro. That it does incredibly well. And they had to shrink all of that technology to fit into a much smaller form factor. So it's definitely not going to be as good, but you also don't have to wear these huge heavy goggles. So these glasses, is optimized for color correction, power, and brightness. Micro LED projectors and optical grade silicon carbide allow for 70 degrees field of view. It also has custom silicon in it, so custom chips. Enables dynamic AI and AR experiences to run on a pair of glasses using a fraction of the power and weight of a headset or smartphone. Magnesium frames, which manage extreme thermal and weight distribution while maximizing comfort. And it has miniaturized cameras and sensors enable eye, hand, and world tracking while providing AI with rich insights. So I can already see just in this a number of different cameras, both on the front and on the sides. And it also seems to come with this like wristband type thing. And they call it revolutionary electromyography technology in a comfortably worn wristband for subtle, socially acceptable input, enabling use in low light or in public environments without requiring your hands in view. And here's a little bit more about what that EMG wristband looks like. So it definitely has a lot of sensors on the inside and it's pretty good looking. I mean, it looks like any other wristband that you might wear or even a smartwatch. Watch. And then it also has this very small computing device. So they couldn't fit all of the compute into these glasses, but it's wireless compute and you just put it in your pocket. So experience the freedom of pocket-sized computing designed to enhance reality on your terms. Orion delivers low latency compute power in a compact wireless form factor. So basically you have the glasses, you have this thing you put in your pocket and you have this thing that you put around your wrist. And with all of those things together, you have this incredible device. And I am definitely gonna buy it and test it out and let you know what I think. So this is only in prototype right now, which you know seems to be a theme in the AI world. We're gonna show something off, it's a prototype and we'll release it when we feel it's good enough which I don't love, but you know what? I'd rather see it early than I guess not at all. And as of today, they're gonna be opening up access to our Orion product prototype for meta employees and select external audiences so our development team can learn, iterate, and build towards our consumer AR glasses product line. Meta, please send me a pair. I wanna try them out. And going forward, here's what they're focused on. Tuning the AR display quality to make the visuals even sharper, optimizing wherever we can to make the form factor even smaller, and building at scale to make them affordable. If I had to guess, these are going to be $1,000 plus dollars to buy them when they finally come out. This is a lot of technology to fit into such a small form factor. Next, Johnny Ive, the famed designer behind many of the Apple products that we know and love today, is working with Sam Altman and OpenAI to create an AI hardware device. And he confirmed it. And if you weren't aware, Johnny Ive, after leaving Apple, started a new design firm called Love From, and their first product is a collaboration with the clothing brand Montclair. And it's a $3,000 jacket where the innovation is a button, just a button. This is definitely out of my price range and I actually don't even think it looks good to be frank. So here are a few variations of it. And as you can see, these are the buttons right here. But now he's also working with OpenAI to create the future of an AI device. And I can't wait to see what it is. Next, according to the information, Anthropic, the company behind Claude has floated a $40 billion valuation in funding talks. So all of these major AI companies are getting funding right now. Anthropic, OpenAI's largest startup competitor, has started talking to investors about raising capital in a deal that could value the startup at 30 to $40 billion, roughly doubling its valuation from a funding that closed earlier this year. Now, Claude is an incredibly capable model, but after this week, 
with advanced voice mode and O1, it really does seem like OpenAI is ahead of the pack. Around the start of the year, Anthropic projected that by the end of this year, it would be generating about 800 million in annualized revenue or $66 million in revenue per month, which is an enormous amount. And Amazon resells Claude to its customers, and I'm sure that is a large portion of where their revenue comes from. But the company also projected to burn $2.7 billion. And it's the same thing with OpenAI. These companies are moving so fast, investing so heavily that, yeah, they're burning money, but that's what tech startups have been doing for decades. And then hopefully one day they become profitable. Next, there has been a shuffle at the Microsoft AI division. Now, Microsoft AI is headed by Mustafa Suleiman, previously the CEO and founder of Inflection. And usually just a shakeup like this isn't news alone, but it actually, according to the information, speaks to what their strategy might be going forward with regards to synthetic data. So a couple quick points from this article. Microsoft created Phi, which is created with synthetic data. They hired Inflection CEO Mustafa Suleiman as the Microsoft AI CEO. And in January, they moved Sebastian Bubek, the lead researcher on Phi, out of Microsoft Research and into a new organization focused on building distilled models. But now that Mustafa Suleiman is in charge, Bubek is moving back into the research division. And so they might be shying away from using synthetic data to train their next next frontier models. Next, from Stability AI, famed director behind incredible movies like Avatar and Terminator and Titanic, James Cameron is joining Stability AI's board of directors. Stability AI says, Cameron's addition represents a significant step forward in our mission to transform visual media. His artist-centric perspective paired with his business and technical acumen will be invaluable as we continue to build a full-stack AI pipeline that unlocks new opportunities for creators to tell stories in ways once unimaginable. Now, it seems like Hollywood and AI companies are getting closer and closer. Just last week, movie production company Lionsgate partnered with Runway, and now we have this news. So I really think that at least the really forward-thinking movie creation companies and movie producers, movie directors, are thinking about how to incorporate AI into the creative process, rather than trying to fight it like the music industry did for a long time with MP3s. Next, we have some updates from Boston Dynamics. Their spot and orbit robots are getting some upgrades. Here we can see it doing ultrasonic inspections, and it now has autonomous laser scanning, so even better at navigating foreign environments. So here we can see it mapping out a real-world environment, which just seems so cool. And spot is no longer confined to one docking station. It can go and arrange multiple docking stations throughout an environment and go charge up wherever it needs to. And it's better than ever at navigating complex environments, as you could see right here, going around ladders rather than under it, because obviously Spot believes in bad luck, up difficult stairs. So just very, very impressive from Boston Dynamics. And I can't wait to see the future iterations of their humanoid robot. Next, just yesterday, Google DeepMind released two new iterations of their models. So today we're releasing two updated production ready Gemini models, Gemini 1.5 Pro 002 and 1.5 Flash 002. Greater than a 50% reduced price on 1.5 Pro, that's for both input and output tokens, and two times higher rate limits on 1.5 Flash, three times higher on 1.5 Pro, and two times faster output and three times lower latency. All of this news is great, but putting it in the context of everything else that was announced in the last two weeks, it doesn't quite match the impact of what a lot of other companies are releasing right now. But you know what? Good on Google. Keep up the good work. Next, apparently OpenAI pitched the White House on collaborating on energy production. So at a White House meeting, OpenAI Sam Altman shared a company report on the benefits of building a data center of up to five gigawatts. Such a facility would be equivalent to the consumption of nearly three million homes. So there is definitely going to be this future of huge data centers powered by possibly and probably mini nuclear power plants. And that's gonna be a really cool future. If we can have all of these independent and decentralized data centers and energy production facilities, that is gonna make AI so much more secure. 
Next, another story from the information. OpenAI is revamping Sora. You remember Sora. It's the text-to-video product that OpenAI never released. It looked incredible, but we never got our hands on it. It was definitely the best text-to-video product that I had ever seen, but I've seen multiple that are just as good since the original announcement. But now, apparently, OpenAI is giving a version 2, but where's version one? I want to use it. So according to Stephanie Palazzolo, a number of investors told me at the time that the impressive Sora demos cast a worrying shadow over the gaggle of competing AI video startups, but OpenAI still hasn't launched Sora, which we just talked about. That could soon change. OpenAI is training a new version of Sora that it hopes will quickly generate clips that are higher in quality and longer than the one it demonstrated earlier in the year, according to a person who's spoken to OpenAI executives about it. So we can soon have hopefully at least some version of Sora in our hands to play with. Next, Notion is releasing an AI integration deeply into its product. And I use Notion every single day. I mostly like it. It's a little bit heavy at times, but I mostly like it. And now we are getting a ton of new AI functionality. I popped open Notion today and I got greeted with this new functionality immediately. I haven't had a chance to play around with it, but let's look at some of the things you could do. So it can actually scan external systems as well, which is kind of unique because Notion is the source of data itself. Here, of course, you can generate writing, which is nothing new, analyze PDF and images, which is cool, but again, nothing new. A lot of this stuff is very basic, but I'm glad to see it built in natively into Notion. So they're taking a very conservative approach to AI, but it's better than nothing. Next, from AI2, we have a new family of models called Molmo, a family of open, state-of-the-art, multimodal AI models. Our best model outperforms proprietary systems using a thousand times less data. So you can try it for yourself right here, allenai.org. So here's the score on academic benchmarks and human preference ELO ratings. Here's the Malmo series of models and here's GPT-40. So Malmo 72B outperforms GPT-40. I'll have to test it myself. Let me know if you want me to make a video about a full test of this Malmo model. But pretty much across the board on the academic benchmarks, it beats the other models and in human preference ELO rating Malmo 72B. And by the way, human preference ELO rating is usually the best way to benchmark a new model. So the only one that it really loses to is GPT-40, but just barely by two points. The other models it does beat. And the nice thing is it's open source. You can download it today. And here it is built into an Apple Vision Pro that you can use in real time. This is a really cool demo, so take a look. So you're walking around, you ask what this machine is used for, it takes a picture, sends it off to Malmo, and then Malmo gives the answer in voice. Let me play that for you now. Okay, let's start off with something basic. Hey Malmo, what is this machine used for? This is a sophisticated coffee station featuring a large stainless steel machine with a digital display surrounded by coffee cups, creamers, and sugar packets. And here's a really cool demo where they are asking it to give an overview of different options from this coffee maker and actually highlights it in real time as it's telling you. Check this out. Overview of these options. The image shows a coffee machine with various drink options. Coffee is available in different strengths, including a Coffee Strong X2 option. For those who prefer milk-based drinks, there are specialty choices like cappuccino and latte. Flavored specialty drinks are also offered, such as cafe mocha and vanilla latte. Very cool. And just when I thought I was done recording the AI news video, here's another piece of news that just dropped. Mira Marathi, as of three minutes ago of recording this video, shared the following note with the OpenAI team today. I have something to share with you. After much reflection, I have made the difficult decision to leave OpenAI. My six and a half years with the OpenAI team have been an extraordinary privilege. While I express my gratitude to many individuals in the coming days, I want to start by thanking Sam and Greg for their trust in me to lead the technical organization. Then she goes on to talk about a lot of kind of fluff and reasons why she's leaving, but here's the real reason. I'm stepping away because I want to create the time and space to do my own exploration. My primary focus is doing everything in my power to ensure a smooth transition, maintaining the momentum we've built. So another one bites the dust. And if you remember back a year ago during the whole controversy when Sam Altman was fired, Mira Marathi briefly took over, if I remember correctly. So she was probably part of the coup that happened. Anyways, now she's on the way out. So Ilya's gone, Mira's gone, 
Greg Brockman is on extended leave and uh, Sam Altman is all that's left, but they are shipping like crazy. So that's it for today. If you enjoyed these news stories, if you enjoyed this video, please consider giving a like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.